So you may remember on the show yesterday, I talked about the idea of laundering lies, that this is in essence what the media is doing. So I was talking about it yesterday in the context of uh, Jen Psaki, the White House press secretary, on Brian Stelter's show, you know, the most ironically named show in the history of television, Reliable Sources, and what Stelter was asking was, in effect, what could we, what could we as the media do to help the messaging of the presidency more? What could journalists do better? And it was idea laundering because you would never ask that of the people you're supposed to be holding to account. So they just launder their lies and then it sort of seems like news. Oh, the press secretary was on with Stelter and it's on CNN, it kind of seems like news, but in effect, they're just laundering a lie. Well, I got a perfect, perfect example of it to show you right now. So before I show you the clip, this is MSNBC, and they did a segment on a Washington Post op-ed by, by a guy by the name of Max Boot, and he's just sort of a never Trump Republican, which again, it's just one of these pet Republicans. You'll never defend any sort of conservative idea, but they let you go on MSNBC, and they treat you like a pet, and you get your cookie, and you go home, and you never actually accomplish anything or defend any of your purported ideas or anything like that. I would say this is sort of like Bill Kristol or David Frum, these, or the Lincoln Project people. These are just ineffectual, that sort of nobodies. Nobody likes them except the MSNBC people that use them as pets. Well, he wrote a piece in WA, Washington Post, called Too Many People Are Underestimating the Trump Threat. So here you have a, a guy writing a piece in Washington Post about the Trump threat. Now that sounds very scary. Then on MSNBC, they analyze this very piece that he wrote and they bring in a journalist from the New York Times, her name is Mara Gay, uh, to analyze this Trump threat. Now before I show you the clip, you may remember, as I said earlier, Mara Gay just a few weeks ago was interviewing Andrew Yang uh, in the New York Times and said that me, Dave Rubin, that I regularly host white supremacists. I tweeted at her many times asking her for clarification on that. Of course, she did not respond. We also gave away a month free to anyone who signed up uh, at the Rubin Report community in honor of Mara Gay. I think we used Mara, it was code Mara uh, at the time. Uh, so I thank you for that, Mara. Uh, she also got the name of the show wrong. She called it the Dave Rubin Show. We couldn't get a retraction or a correction or anything because th these people aren't journalists. They're just human jokes that show up on these shows. But anyway, uh, she then, so you have a Washington Post writer who writes an op-ed, then MSNBC covers that very op-ed, who's written, you know, it's written in effect by an activist, a Democratic activist. It's then covered in MS on MSNBC and they bring in a New York Times journalist to analyze it. And you're not gonna believe it. This woman was on Long Island and they had American flags. Video. I was on Long Island this weekend, uh, visiting a really dear friend, and I was really disturbed. I saw, you know, dozens and dozens of pickup trucks with, uh, you know, uh, explicatives against Joe Biden uh, on the back of them, yep. uh, Trump yep. flags, and some cases just dozens of American flags, which, you know, uh, is also just disturbing because essentially the message was clear. It was, this is my country. This is not your yep. country. I own this. And so until we're ready to have that conversation, this is going to continue. I think she means expletives, not explicatives, but I don't wanna be a white supremacist by correcting anyone's English. Um, but look, I come from Long Island. One of the good things, I think one of the things that actually made me who I am, the reason that perhaps you watch this show, is that Long Island is actually a wonderfully diverse place where you're outside of New York City, you know, about 45 minutes outside of New York City, so it's the suburbs of the big city. And what you got there was so many people who were second and third generation Americans whose parents, you know, grew up basically in Queens and Brooklyn in tenement houses and small apartments, just like my grandparents, you know, one bedroom, six kids. Uh, and, and then eventually through hard work in the American dream, they got their families to be able to move out to the suburbs. My family is literally an example of the American dream. And so many people, whether they were Irish or Italian or Jewish or black or Hispanic or whatever it is, all did that on Long Island. Long Island's sort of the best example of what America could be in a certain sense and then have that proximity to the big city where the, the further generations who then, then were middle class could go and, and follow their dreams. And some crazy kid from Long Island could try to do stand-up comedy in New York City for years and then eventually do something that led to something pretty decent in 2021. Yeah, this guy. Um, it's a beautiful place, Long Island. Anyway, her fear, first off, that there were people with trucks with, with uh, anti-Biden messages on the, the, the 
trucks, I suppose, or the flags. First off, I just don't believe that. I mean, there may have been one or two that she saw, but like, are, have any of you, anyone watching this, seen lots of trucks drive around? Like, can I say the F word? Screw, we don't want to get demonetized, Susan Wojcicki. Screw old Joe Biden. Have you seen that flag? Have you seen that flag? No. When Trump was president, everywhere you went, there were pictures of Trump as a Nazi and crossing out his face and giving him a mustache and all of those things. But, but further, it's really the flag part here that's disturbing. A, I think she's just mostly making this stuff up, but she has what I think is, and I don't mean to make this about her. It, doesn't, it really doesn't matter about her, and I don't even care what she said about me. But, but the idea that a New York Times journalist goes on MSNBC to comment on a Washington Post story shows you how they launder the lies. And that then she gets up there and she fears the American flag. And, and don't take my word for it. Listen to what she's saying. When she sees the American flag, that somehow triggers a thought in her mind about white supremacy. And then you can sort of link it back to what Obama just said, that, you know, these the white people are getting nervous and that they, I don't know, they pray to the American flag to keep what they've lost. Like, it's just a bunch of, of self-serving, myopic drivel. That really is what it is. And in some ways, Mara, you're the racist. You're the racist. Nobody cares what color you are. I, I wish you well in whatever it is that you're doing, right? Like, that's great. You work at the New York Times. It's a crumbling place of journalism, and you're not a very good journalist. But, like, great for you to have that job. That, that's just fantastic. So I don't mean to make this about you, Mara. But the point is, you're obsessed with race. So it's, do you think it's possible? Could it be possible that people... I know this is crazy. I'm gonna need a little bit of a leash here, people. Do you think it's possible that somewhere in America there are some people who are proud of the American flag and proud of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and this wonderful country that we've had for 250 years that have give, has given more freedom to more people than could have ever been imaginable? Do you think there are some people that are worried that, that we're losing that, not having anything to do with race, but that we're actually trading in equality for equity. We're erasing our own history and demolishing the things that freed people uh, in the name of your crazed social justice. And it has nothing to do with them being racist. It has, them, has everything to do with them caring about freedom and liberty and that kind of stuff. Do you think that that's possible? And, and the answer, I suspect, and Mara, you're welcome to come on the show to tell me this yourself, but I suspect her answer would be no, because they see everything in a racialized world. But I can tell you this, when I went to Donald Trump rallies and I went to a few here in crazy lefty California, in the heart of Los Angeles, in Beverly Hills, bananas Beverly Hills, I saw American flags everywhere. I saw Trump flags, I saw all sorts of stuff, I saw gay flags, and everybody was really nice. And I didn't see any racist people. So I think it's possible that the American flag stands for something other than race and that you're, unfortunately, you're in some sort of requiem for a dream where you see the American flag and it makes you think that everyone's racist. Not good. Uh, and now this is a little bit of a cheap shot, but you know, it's YouTube. What am I gonna do? If you don't remember who Mara Gay is, well, here she is uh, doing some math on MSNBC with Brian Williams. And of course, if you don't remember Brian Williams, he was the NBC anchor. He was once on NBC Nightly News, the primetime anchor at 6.30 p.m. They caught him lying and his punishment was to have to host a show on MSNBC. That's a beautiful thing. So she went on his show. You may remember this from a couple months back. But you see it as a possibility if he wants to spend a billion bucks beating this guy, he could do it. Absolutely. Um, somebody tweeted recently that um, actually with the money he spent, he could have given every American a million dollars. I got it. Let's put it up yeah. on the screen. It, when I read it uh, tonight on social media, it kind of all became clear. Bloomberg spent 500 million on ads. U.S. population, 327 million. Uh, don't tell us if you're ahead of us on the math. He could have given each American one million dollars and have had lunch money left over. It's an incredible way of putting it. It's an incredible way of putting it. It's true. It's disturbing. It does, it does suggest, you know, what we're talking about here, which is there, there's too much money in politics. Um, I'm sorry. I know it's cheap, but that clip is just so perfect because she completely makes up nonsense. He accepts the nonsense. That got, got by producers and directors. I've got two guys in this room. They do better fact checking. God bless you guys. And you know what? You both can have Chipotle for lunch today. Um, Bloomberg spent 500 million 
on the campaign. That's what they were saying. There's 327 million Americans. So I'm just math in my head. It's basically like, I don't know, you give everybody a dollar fifty, not a million dollars each. And they let that run and nobody corrected it. MSNBC, they've leaned so far forward, they actually fell into the bottomless pit. There you go.